Hey everybody and welcome to part 8 of the Lightburn for Galvo Crash Course. This is a big episode. We've finally arrived and it's time to celebrate. Today we are finding the focal point of your laser with Lightburn for Galvo. And this is a milestone guys. This is where we're really starting to get things set up so that they're usable. Lasers often come from manufacturers with little red dot pointers that show you where the focus is and they get you by, but it's almost never the optimal focus. Finding your focal point on your own is one of the best things you can do to improve your engravings. We're gonna talk about exactly how to do that today. If you missed the last episode where we talk about basic laser operations, you should probably go watch it. It will help you get through this episode a little bit easier, knowing where all the buttons are and what they do, so. Check out the link to the official playlist down in the description if you haven't already watched that stuff. This is all kind of building blocks and we're, we're building up as we go on. So you're going to want those skills before moving forward. But if you're still here and you're still watching, I'm going to assume you're ready to rock and roll. I'm ready to go. You may hear the whir of the laser in the background. So let's get started without further ado. We have Lightburn open and it is detecting our laser. And we're going to come up here and grab the rectangle tool and we're going to make a small rectangle. It doesn't have to be big. 10 to 20 millimeters, let's just call it an even 15 will do. And I'm going to unlock the proportion lock here so we can just set that to 15 by 15. And remember if we hit the P key on the keyboard, that's actually going to center this up for us in our workspace. And we're going to set this to black, which I have set to fill mode. And we're going to use the kind of standard settings we used from the last couple episodes here. 1000 speed, 80 power, 25 frequency. If your machine doesn't go down to 25 frequency, just go as low as you can because we want a nice loud mark with lots of ablation, lots of sparks. So lower frequency is going to do that for us. Line interval around 0.025 as usual. And we're going to do a scan angle of 45 degrees with a bi-directional fill and crosshatch turned on. With that all set up, we can hit OK. And here's our little square. Let's go ahead and frame this real quick and just make sure that we are going to be hitting our test material. I recommend absolutely using some kind of metal for this. If you have steel or aluminum, that works great. If you have some other kind of metal, go for it. The whole aim of this test is going to be finding where the mark is the loudest and brightest and metal is by far going to be the best material for that. I highly recommend aluminum or steel. So if you can grab some of that. Once we have our test square lit up on our test piece, we want to raise our Galvo head up as high as it will go on the tower. This is especially true if you have a larger lens, something like a 200 or 300 millimeter lens. You really need to get that as high as it can go because you're going to need that focal distance between the lens and the material when you're testing. I know for a fact that I'm well above my actual focal point with my 110 lens here. So I'm going to start from here just for the sake of time, but you should really be starting at the top of the tower when executing this test. Back over here in Lightburn in our frame menu, we are going to want to make sure that we check this run continuously box. We don't want to have to keep restarting this over and over and over again while we're trying to raise and lower our tower. And if we don't check run continuously, it's only going to run one time before the job is complete. So we're going to go ahead and just check this run continually box. And then when we're finished with the test, we can go ahead and hit stop. Also, because we can't even really see when the beam is firing when we're out of focus, you're absolutely going to want to wear safety glasses for this. So please put your safety glasses on before starting this test. So here's the testing process, guys. You're going to want to start with your Galvo head, like I was mentioning, way above where you think the focal point is gonna be. Once you've got the Galvo head up high enough, go ahead and press the start button in the framing menu, and it's going to begin continuously marking in the area where our test material is. From here, you're gonna slowly lower your Galvo head until you begin to see and hear your laser reacting with the metal. What we're looking for and hoping for is the loudest and brightest reaction as we're lowering the Galvo head. If you push too far, you're gonna notice the laser go out of focus and it's going to start dimming and getting quieter. So just go ahead and raise it back up. I highly recommend going up and down a few times to try to gauge where that sweet spot is. On smaller lenses like the 70 millimeter and the 110 millimeter, 
the point where you're getting the best focus is going to be fairly obvious because it's a very shallow depth of field. But on larger lenses like 200 and 300 millimeter lenses, the depth of field is very, very deep. So you're going to be not only trying to find where the laser is best in focus, but the center of that area, since you're going to have a much wider area in which the laser is actually in focus on those lenses. Larger lenses can also be more difficult because they are spreading the power out over a larger area. So your reaction with your test material isn't gonna be as vibrant or loud with a lens of that size. For actually measuring our focal distance, I'm gonna do a little throwback Thursday here for you guys. And we're gonna pull up a clip from one of the old fiber laser setup videos back from when the channel was super new. So uh, I just, I can't say it better than I already have. So I'm gonna let this clip run real quick and then we'll circle back around. So we found our focal point, just that perfect sweet spot where everything is the loudest and brightest. What do we do next? Well, we have to measure this somehow. And the way I like to do it is with these clear metric acrylic rulers. Get a view as dead on as possible and then go ahead and line up your ruler with the laser head. You wanna keep the ruler as straight as possible to get the most accurate measurement. The number we're looking for is right here, right where the ruler crosses the lip of the lens. My lens appears to be sitting right at 350 millimeters. But don't forget, if your zero doesn't start at the bottom of the ruler, we have to account for this additional space and add it to our total. So we'll go ahead and take a measurement of this next. We can easily measure this space with our handy dandy caliper. And that seems to give us a result of six millimeters. So with an initial measurement of 350 millimeters and our additional supplementary measurement of six millimeters, we can reasonably conclude that the perfect focal point for our fiber laser is 356 millimeters. Holy crap, that makes me feel super old just watching it. From here, you have a couple options. You can do something as simple as cutting a dowel rod and using that as a focal stick, or if you have a CO2 or diode laser, you can make your own focal stick by cutting it out of something like acrylic or wood. Building a focal stick is super easy. You just wanna make sure that your top bar is wide enough that your lens is going to fit inside of the width here. That way you can push your focal stick right up to the lens without having to deal with the corners slipping on the inside. Then all we have to do is draw a quick crossbar and have that come in. We'll select both and make sure we weld them together. If you'd like the bottom of your focal stick to get a little sharper down at the bottom, just draw one more rectangle. We're going to rotate it just a little bit and we'll come over and make them intersect. Adjust your rotation if you need to, to get the right kind of angle on your focal stick. Then go ahead and select both and we're going to use the subtract boolean to chop away that extra little piece. And now it comes down to a nice point on the end which can make it a little bit easier for you to get measurements on smaller objects. Next, we just need to assign our focal distance to the height value of our focal stick. So the focal length of my 110 lens is 189 millimeters, and we can hit enter. And this stick looks a little bit wonky, so we'll probably go ahead and remake that with the actual size in mind. There we go. With this one, we can set the actual focal distance now, 189. And that looks much nicer than the original one that we made way too small. So we can go ahead and delete that. And then you'll just load this into your DSP or G-code copy of Lightburn and cut it out on your CO2 or diode laser and you've got a nice little focal stick. And I think that's about it, guys. I think that's all you need to know in order to find the focal distance for your lens. Remember, your focal distance is going to be different for different lenses. So you'll have to do this every time that you install a new lens on your fiber or CO2 Galvo laser. For you CO2 Galvo guys, by the way, this process is a little different. Typically, what I will do, instead of doing the height test because wood and acrylic don't really spark, is I will draw a little box like this. In our fill settings here, I'm going to change the line interval to something pretty big, like two millimeters, and we're gonna do a zero degree hatch, and we're gonna turn cross hatch off as well. And we can hit okay. And if we hit the preview button here, you'll see that that's just gonna give us an array of lines back and forth. And what we're gonna do is we're going to just slowly change the focus and try to get these lines as sharp as possible. So if they seem really big and fat and burned out, then you're probably out of focus. 
It definitely takes a little trial and error, but just keep running this mark over and over again until you get the lines as skinny as they possibly can be, and then you measure your focal distance the same exact way. But anyway, guys, like I was saying, I think that's all I have for today. The next episode, episode nine, is going to be just a little bit of prep because now we're going to start getting into some complicated topics to really finally dial our machine in and have it operating at 100% of its potential. So before we dig into those more complicated topics, I just want to give an overview of what they are and the order in which you should tackle them. So that's coming up next. And then we're going to get into things like lens corrections, laser timing, and red light adjustments. So all of that and more coming at you. But for now, we are finished. Go take a break and I will see you in the next one. Hey guys, thank you so much for watching this episode of the Lightburn for Galvo Crash Course. If you got value out of this one, don't forget to smash the like button, let everybody else know the content is good, and don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell so that you get notified the next time we add an episode to the Crash Course. If you need help with anything at all, there are links to our absolutely 100% free Discord and Facebook group down in the description, right next to the link to the Laser Master Academy, the number one way to support the channel. We absolutely love what we do here, guys, teaching you how to use your laser engraving machines, and we wanna keep doing that. Every episode that we upload to the YouTube channel for everyone for free is thanks to our members over at the Laser Master Academy. If you want to sign up to support the channel, you can find out more over at masters.lasereverything.net. It starts at eight bucks a month. It comes with a bunch of bonus goodies for signing up, and it's an awesome community over there. So I hope to see you over there soon. That's all I've got for this one, guys. Thank you so much for watching again, and I will see you in the next one.